Hey there, good to see you. In this video today, I'm reviewing a new collection of anglerfish, LED lights and modifiers made by iFootage. iFootage as a brand is not really known, at least at the time of this video, for lighting. iFootage is more known for their what I think are excellent tripods and monopods. I own and use both. They also make some really cool uh, magic arms that I've talked about here on my channel before. But these are new. Lighting is not something that iFootage has produced until now. What's different about them? Well, iFootage claims that their LED lights are some of the most color accurate, if not the most color accurate, daylight balanced, continuous LED lights that you can buy today on the market. So the only way really to test their claims and to see if iFootage is telling the truth about these lights is to use one of these. If you've never seen one of these before, this is a Sekonic C800 light meter. This is such a cool and nerdy device. I love this thing. It's basically, you know, like an old school light meter, but with a touchscreen like iPhone or smartphone, like, you know, stuck onto the bottom of it. So let's begin here by putting these lights to the test and finding out how color accurate they truly are. Hey, this is me in the future. I'm jumping in here really quick because I just realized after editing this video that it may not be clear to everyone watching uh, what exactly is meant by color accuracy. What is it, you know, what is a lighting manufacturer saying when they say that their lights are color accurate? They're not talking about the color of the light itself. Rather, what they are talking about is the accuracy of colors that are illuminated by the light, the colors in your subject. That could be the colors of say like my skin tone, it could be the color of this, you know, color chart here. It could be the color of a product on a table if you were doing product photography. But you don't want it to add a little bit of green, a little bit of blue, a little bit of magenta, whatever. You just want the colors to be as they are. So that is what is meant when a lighting manufacturer like iFootage claims that their lights are color accurate. Hope that makes sense. So I ran a number of color accuracy tests against all three of the lights that you see here. This little one here, this is the Anglerfish 60DN. This is a 70 watt uh, compact LED. This one over here is the Anglerfish 220DN. This is a 220 watt light. This is the Anglerfish 320DN, which has uh, an output of 320 watts. All three of these lights have a fixed color temperature of 5600 Kelvin, which I footage claims in actual use. Uh, should be within like a margin of error of like plus or minus 200. So it's not going to be like, you know, dead on 5600, which is, you know, pretty standard fare with all LEDs. The first test that I ran was a CRI test, which stands for Color Rendering Index. It is the most common test, and that's why I'm starting with that. CRI is actually a very old test. It's very outdated. It's like 50 years old now. And it's also a very easy test to manipulate because CRI really only measures like like eight colors. So all a hardware manufacturer has to do is nail those eight colors. And if they do, well, they get a higher CRI value and they can claim to be a very color accurate light. All right, so as you can see up here on the screen, I tested all three lights and all three of these anglerfish lights had a CRI value right around 98. Now this is on a scale of zero to 100. So 98 is a very good score. But again, CRI, not the best test. So let's take a look at another one. All right, the next test is SSI, which stands for Spectral Similarity Index. This test is really interesting because it compares the similarity of one light against another. So because these anglerfish lights claim to be so similar to daylight, I use the CIE D55 preset on the Sekonic. All three lights score in the low 80s on a scale of 0 to 100. Now, numerically speaking, low 80s on a scale of 0 to 100 may not seem that, <laughs> that impressive, but it actually is. Most LED lights that are currently available on the market typically score um, in this test somewhere in the 70s or, or even lower. Another interesting data point in this test is the color temperature. Now, as I said earlier, these lights, according to iFootage, have a margin of error of plus or minus 200. So as expected, these lights come in a little bit lower than 5600, but they're very close. Okay, next test is TLCI, which stands for Television Lighting Consistency Index. This is a test that is more specific to the broadcast television world, utilizing uh, an X-Rite color checker. All three lights have a very high TLCI rating of 99 on a scale of 0 to 100. Another interesting thing to point out here is how similar all three waveforms are. 
even though you know one is 60 watt and one is 220 watt and one is 320 watt, they're all basically the same. For comparison, I also tested my Godox UL150, which is a very similar daylight balanced LED light. It's the light I've been using as my key light for the past couple of years. It's actually the key light I'm using right now in this video. And with the Godox, you can see that there is a noticeable spike in its blue wavelength. Now, the spike is actually quite common with LEDs, but the anglerfish lights do a better job of normalizing blue with the other colors in the spectrum to more closely emulate the appearance of natural daylight. And then finally, we have TM30. Now, TM30 is a really interesting test because it includes more colors. It has 99 colors compared to the other ones, and it tests for not just color fidelity, but also color saturation. So we're able to learn more about the colors and test a wider variety of colors in this test compared to the other ones. And it has a really cool visualization. So let's take a look at it. So first we have RF, which is a score for color fidelity. All three lights are right around 97 or 98, which is really good on a scale of zero to 100. And then next to that, we have RG, which measures uh, saturation on a scale of 60 to 140, with 100 being you know, like dead center, right where you wanna be. And as we can see here, all three anglerfish lights score 100 or 101, which is exactly right, which is exactly what you want. And then down here at the bottom is a really cool visualization that shows uh, color fidelity and saturation mapped on top, of a, on top of a color wheel. And you can't see it, but underneath the red circle is a black circle. And that black circle uh, represents the ideal, represents the, you know, the ideal values for fidelity and saturation. And this red circle that you see here is almost perfectly aligned. I mean, you really can't even see the black circle underneath it. The, um, the red line is almost perfectly round. Basically, the more perfectly round that red line is and the less black you see underneath it, the more color accurate the light is. So as you can see here, uh, these circles are almost perfectly round. So, uh, so these lights perform really well in this test. So overall, using the Sekonic C800 here to test the color accuracy of all three anglerfish lights, all three are spot on. All three are exactly in line with, uh, with, with the data. They're, they're exactly what iFootage claims that, that they would be. Material-wise, all three lights are constructed using hard, durable, uh, aluminum. There is a little bit of plastic here and there, like, you know, these knobs on the back of the 60DN, uh, this little knob here, things like that. But the majority of materials that are used here are durable and should last, and, and they definitely do not feel cheap. And it's good to see that the same materials that were used for these two more expensive lights here also found their way into the 60DN as well. To control the lights, both the uh, the 220 and the 320 come with one of these, and they actually display uh, down here in the lower right-hand corner, you know, which you know light goes with which controller, which is good because they look almost identical from a distance, and it'd be kind of easy to um, to get them mixed up. Both of the the larger lights use one of these, while the 60D does not. The 60D, the controllers for it are here on the back of the light, including uh, an integrated display back here. But as far as this controller goes, I mean, this is pretty much standard fare with you know other LED lights that are on the market. There's a little uh, loop here that you can use to hang the controller on a light stand or a C stand. Then you have a power in and power out up here on the top. There's also a DMX input up here as well if you want to be you know connecting it to some kind of light board. And then here on the front, you have the LED display with a turn dial here that you can use to navigate the menu and adjust the brightness on the light. Down here at the bottom of the controller, there's an integrated fan. And I've actually never heard the fan turn on in the controller, but uh, maybe because I haven't used it in a warmer environment than you know, a room temperature room. In general, these controllers are perfectly fine. They do the job. I mean, they're, they're very similar to other controllers that are on the market. There is, however, one thing that I do not like about them and one thing that I hope that iFootage can change in the future. And that is the fact that uh, these controllers do not have V-mount uh, battery attachments on the back, which could be a big deal for some people, especially if you take the lights out uh, in the field and you're using them in a location where you don't have access to power or at least power just isn't readily available. Well, unfortunately, uh, with this, you know, first iteration of lights here from uh, from iFootage, they don't have V-mount battery attachments. So these have to be plugged into some kind of wall outlet or you know, like a generator you know, something like that. They need direct power. You know, battery is unfortunately not an option. 
Now the 60D is a little bit different. It does not use one of these, you know, big bulky power controllers like the other two lights. Rather, this one just has a very basic, you know, uh, adapter, power adapter to be plugging the, the light directly into a wall. But there are more options for powering this light compared to the other two, including a rather clever little USB-C uh, input here on the back. This requires 100 watts of power delivery, so you need to make sure that whatever it is that you're uh, plugging in has a sufficient output in order to power the light. And actually, I have a, a V-mount battery right here that we can use. So yeah, this is a pretty cool option. It could actually be really helpful, like if you have the light in a hard to reach place and kind of an awkward, you know, like up high somewhere, you could like, you know, put some Velcro in the back of a battery and, you know, stick it to the side of the light, something like that. But another option that you have, speaking of the V-mount battery, is, uh, is this additional accessory here. This is a, uh, what they call a pistol grip. This does not come with the light. This is uh, an additional accessory that's available for purchase separately. And it's basically a lightweight, you know, little plastic uh, handle with a, a stud up here on the top for mounting the light. And I'll go ahead and do that, tighten it down. And now you can see it's, it's mounted on the handle. Now there's also uh, a V-mount battery attachment here on the back. So I'll go ahead and attach this. There we go. And now with the battery mounted, there is an integrated uh, cord here, a little DC input that you just plug into the back of the light and the light turns on. So now you're able to use the light wirelessly using this handle. So if say you were, you know, kind of like in a run and gun kind of situation and you didn't have time to be like, you know, mounting this light onto a light stand and all that, and there's someone else around who could be helping out, someone who could handhold the light for you. Well, this is a pretty convenient uh, option to be doing so. If you do want to be mounting this to a light stand, there is uh, another uh, light stand uh, input down here on the bottom. So you could, you know, drop this down onto a light stand and, and tighten it down if, if that's how you want to use it. Now, speaking of accessories, there is another accessory for the 60DN that does not come with a light that is available for purchase separately. And that is this mini Bowens mount adapter. With this adapter, you can mount full-sized modifiers on the front that have a Bowens mount. For example, this, uh, this lantern right here, this is part of the anglerfish line and it has a full-sized Bowens mount here on the back. You just drop it into the adapter, twist it on, and you're good to go. So you don't have to be, you know, buying like smaller modifiers just for this light. You can use any modifier that you have that has a Bowens mount on the back. So yeah, really cool accessory. If I were buying the, uh, the 60DN, I would definitely pick up one of these. All three lights have uh, mounts on the bottom for, you know, mounting to uh, a light stand or a C-stand, something like that. The mount on the 320DN though, is a little bit different. You can see that this one has a U mount on it. And this actually allows, let me uh, quickly unplug the light here. This allows the light to be rotated 360 degrees like so. So it gives you more flexibility when you are uh, positioning the light and when you're you know, getting it at just the right angle. The 220DN on the other hand does not have a U mount. It just has, you know, just a, a standard mount like this. It's made well, it's made of metal, it's not made of, you know, cheap plastic or anything like that. The thing is though, is that uh, I don't quite understand quite honestly why this light does not have a U-mount and this one does. Maybe it was like a, a, a cost saving thing that, that I footage did in order to bring down the, the, uh, the cost of the 220. But that said, I mean, I own lights from other manufacturers that are in the same price range that are actually lower wattage than the 220DN and they have, you know, U-mounts like this. So it kind of seems to me that, you know, a high quality 220 watt light like this should really have one of these. So you know, one of my recommendations to iFootage would be to replace this with a full uh, U-mount instead of, you know, what it's currently using. So for the videographers and filmmakers watching this review, you may be curious to know, uh, do these lights make noise? Do they have fans? And the answer is yes, they do. All three lights have internal fans. However, those fans do not run continuously. I actually have a, a light up here that I can't, it's out of frame, I can't show you, but as soon as I turn that light on, the fan just runs all the time. Uh, same speed, you know, no matter how, you know, high or low the brightness uh, is set to. Whereas these anglerfish lights have what they call, I think it's what they call an intelligent cooling system. I think it's what they're calling it. Anyway, it's a thing where uh, the controllers automatically, 
you know, enable and disable the fan and control the RPM of the fan, depending on, you know, the color, the, uh, the temperature of the room, how, how warm the room is. So like right now, this 320DN next to me, uh, you know, it's powered fairly low and this is like a room temperature space right now. So the fan is not running. It's not, it's not turning. It's not making any noise at all. But when the fans do kick on, you will see their RPM on the, uh, on the controller here. And by the way, that's not just limited to the 220 and the 320. The little 60D here on its LED screen back here, it also displays fan speed so that you're able to, you know, check and verify and see how fast uh, the fans are currently running. And the funny thing is, and the thing that honestly took me a bit by surprise is that, you know, I really cranked up these lights, you know, just to, you know, really get a sense for their fan noise. And the 220 and the 320, the fans inside of these are, are very good. They, they appear to be very good quality. They make, you know, just basically no noise at all. Little to no noise. I mean, I could, I really couldn't hear anything coming out of them. The little fan in the 60DN though, I don't know if it's different or what, or maybe it's just my copy of it. I don't know, but it does make a little more noise. And it's kind of ironic that this is the, the lowest wattage light and the smallest light, and yet it makes a little bit of a, of a, of a whirring sound. That said, this light is nowhere near as noisy as say like my Atomos Ninja monitor that I have on top of the Canon R5 right now. The fan in that thing is is pretty loud and and I have a live mic right now and it, it, it really isn't much of a problem. So if you're concerned about fan noise and microphones picking up these lights, I really wouldn't be. So in addition to controlling these lights manually using their external uh, controller box or in the case of the 60DN, the, the knobs in the back of the light, all of these anglerfish lights can also be controlled wirelessly using uh, an app on your phone. iFootage has their own app called Lumen and uh, the app works perfectly fine. And by the way, you can control uh, lights individually like I'm doing right now, or you can gang them all together and then control them all as a group. So this is one of those things really where, where the more lights that you have uh, all connected to the same mobile app, the more useful the mobile app becomes because then you have just one point of control for all of them. And this is the kind of thing that makes a compelling use case, I think, for buying uh, the same brand of light from the same company so that you're able to use all those lights together in the same mobile app. I mean, this photo of mine, I think I probably have like 10 different uh, apps installed on here for all the different LED lights that I have, which is, you know, which is pretty annoying after a while. As far as the app goes, it's perfectly fine. It works, it does the job. It discovered all three lights, no problem, added them all uh, automatically to the app. And then, uh, and then, you know, controlling the light and modifying its brightness, no problem at all. It does the job. Okay, so what haven't I covered? Oh yeah, so another thing you may be interested to know, all three lights uh, do come with a, a large uh, padded carrying case with the, with the Anglerfish logo here on the front. Actually, let me turn around. You can see there's the, the iFootage brand name there. The cases are well constructed, uh, really no problem at all. They also have some, uh, some Velcro loops up here on the top, probably for like attaching like a light stand or a tripod, something like that. They also have these, um, these pad, oh, I forgot to mention, these also do come with uh, reflectors. All three of these do come with one. So you get a full size reflector for the 220 and the 320 and a smaller one for the, uh, for the 60DN here. And these cases are good. The one thing that's a little bit funky about these cases is that they have like this, you know, really stiff, like, um, you know, foam interior in here, which is great if, you know, say you're traveling and you want to, you know, protect the lights. Uh, it definitely does a good job at that. However, it is extremely form fitted and I <laughs> found it to be, it's kind of like one of those, um, it's kind of like a, like a board game. Like, you know, you take everything out of the box and it's kind of a little bit hard sometimes to, uh, to put everything back in. So, um, you know, it, it's good and it'll definitely protect your gear, but putting it back in and packing things up again is, um, yeah, it can be a little tough. So as I mentioned before, the Anglerfish line also includes uh, some modifiers. This is a, uh, a lantern here. This is actually a small one. And then there's a larger one that I have as well. And then there is uh, a couple of domes. Uh, this is the bigger one and there's a smaller one too. Uh, it's gonna be kind of hard to show all of them here. So I'm just gonna put some B-roll uh, up here on the screen. So these modifiers are not, you know, particularly different or unique um, in any way compared to, you know, similar lanterns and domes that are made by 
other brands. And I know that because I actually have one there and there's one over there and I have like, you know, a few of them from diff from uh, different companies. I mean, they all use the same materials, the same construction, the same design, they expand and collapse, you know, pretty much the same. As a matter of fact, it really wouldn't surprise me at all. I don't know this for a fact, but it wouldn't surprise me at all if there was like one place that kind of makes these and then each company just, you know, ch you know, changes out the logo and the colors on them and and uh, and, you know, because they're all very, very similar. And that's not a bad thing at all. They're perfectly fine. I'm just mentioning that in case you were thinking that these were somehow going to be different from other options available on the market uh, because these lights are different. Um, the modifiers are not. They're pretty much standard fare and they work perfectly fine. I mean, these lanterns here are great for like uh, for, I'm actually using one right now over there for filling a room with with additional light, like non-directional light as opposed to a key light. Really good for like establishing a floor, like a nice room tone when it comes to your lighting, just to bring up and fill in some of the darks and some of the shadows in your room. And then of course, you know, a light like this is great for uh, a key light and it does come with a honeycomb Velcro attachment that you can just, you know, put on the front. So if you need modifiers in addition to LED lights, I think these will absolutely do the job. And I think they actually look you know, pretty nice together. I think it looks a little more professional when uh, when your modifiers match the lighting and it all kind of, you know, it all starts to feel a little more cohesive that way. So if you're looking for modifiers in addition to lights, then the iFootage modifiers will definitely do the job and will be perfectly fine. Okay, so I think that's it. I think I've covered everything that there is to say about the Anglerfish uh, LED lights and modifiers. If there's something I missed and I forgot to mention, I will put it in the blog post. Uh, I always write a blog post for the videos that I uh, that I post here on my channel. And sometimes those blog posts contain more information than what I'm able to get into a video. Sometimes for time reasons, sometimes there's just, you know, updates and things that are worth knowing. So if you wanna check out the blog posts that, uh, that you know, coincides with this video, check out the video description below for a link. Thanks to iFootage for sharing the Anglerfish LED lights and modifiers with me to create this review. And by the way, in full disclosure, this video has not been paid for, it's not been sponsored. iFootage has not seen this review prior to publication. They are seeing it at the exact same time that, that you are. They've had no involvement in this. They just you know sent me the products and asked me if I'd be interested in reviewing them. And uh, that's exactly what I'm doing here. So everything that you heard in this review, everything that I've written about these lights over at my website is all my opinion and my uh, experience using these lights. By the way, speaking of my website, if you would like to keep in touch with me and you would like to uh, be notified of new videos when they go live here on my channel, new product reviews, tutorials. I also uh, you know, write some articles about uh, photography and creativity and other topics, and I share those in a weekly email newsletter. Oftentimes, my, uh, my newsletter contains content that's not on my website and is not here on YouTube either. Uh, the newsletter is just a, a good place for it. So if you would like to um, subscribe to that, head over to my website at taldomity.com and you'll see, you know, you'll see there where to uh, sign up. That's it. Thanks so much for being here. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I'll see you next time.